Amen. All right. Now we can jump into the Word. Let's jump into the Word. Last week, we talked about Isaiah praying praying this prayer. How many of you here last week? We talked about Isaiah, and he, and he prayed this prayer. He, he, God, told him to, God told him to go, and we talked about Isaiah praying, Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. So then we talked about the three responses that usually that we have when God tells us to go. How many of you remember what those were? The first one was Job, who said, here am I. I'm not going. And then we had Moses, who said, here am I. Send someone else. And then we had Isaiah, here am I, send me. And we talked about what it took to get Isaiah to that place, to that point. What it took to get him to be able to pray, here am I, send me. Because it's a bold prayer. It's a, it's a, it's a brave prayer. And, and, and it was a risky prayer. But he prayed it. So we talked about that last week. So this morning, today I want to show you a prayer that David prayed. And, and, and like, like, like the prayer that Isaiah prayed, I'm going to dare you this morning to pray the same prayer that David prayed. Amen. I'm going to dare you to pray it. In fact, I'm going to ask you to pray it in just a moment, okay? But I want to, I want to set it up for you. I want to set it up for you. The prayer is actually in Psalm 139. You, you don't need to put it up on the screen yet because I'm going to read you um, all of one Psalm 139. I didn't give you guys all of these verses because you'd be, you'd be putting a lot up there. It's the last two verses in, in Psalm 139 that are our text this morning. But I need to give you a backstory. I need you to understand exactly what David is saying. So just kind of bear with me. I'm going to read it. And I'm going to read it from my phone because it has a larger font and I can read it easier. Some people say, don't you bring your Bible anymore? I have lots of Bibles at home and I still use them to study. But I like my phone right here because it's got font that is that big. And I don't have to pull out my glasses or anything. So let me read you Psalm 139. This is a very familiar, it's a very familiar chapter. Most of you will, will recognize a lot of these verses, but I need you. Listen, I'm just going to read through these about 15, 18 verses. Pay attention because it's going to come into play later, okay? Oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. This is David talking to God. For there is not a word on my tongue. And behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is, it is, it is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness will not hide from you, but the light shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, I like this part, and in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they should be more than the number, they should number more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Now, how many of you, that, those, all those verses are pretty familiar, right? Now watch this. I'm going to read you two more and then we'll get into our text. Because it's like these two just kind of like, where did that come from? Ready for uh, verse 19. All of that saying, God, how you know me, God. And then verse 19. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, oh God. I'm like, where did that come from? Oh, that you would slay the wicked, oh God. Depart from, depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O oh Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. I'm like, I'm reading all this, and I'm like, where did those last two verses come from? Where did that, I mean, that was just kind of jumped out of nowhere. It's like, what was that all about? Now, so, so follow me on this. After David's enemies are actually accusing David and God 
of, of having wrong motives, of, of acting wrong. Instead of David saying, oh, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. No, 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 please don't take it like that. No, 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 no. Watch what David finishes his prayer. And this is our text this morning, verses 23 and 24. David says this, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Listen to me this morning. That's a powerful, risky prayer that I'm going to dare all of you to pray this morning. In fact, would you pray it with me? Would you pray it with me? Can you get um, back up to verse 23? We'll start at verse 23. Everybody say this with me. Now listen, it's not a catch. Okay, you're like, oh, you're going to trick me again. You're going to, no, I'm not tricking you or anything. Just say this prayer with me. Ready? Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That's our text this morning. Now I'm going to divide that text into four parts. You can kind of see, you can kind of actually see the four parts. The first part starts in verse 23 where it says, search me God and know my heart. Now, again, remember, David is praying this. And here's, here's why I told you to pay attention when I was reading all of Psalm 139, because I think you'll agree with me and you'll see this. It's pretty obvious, okay? It's pretty obvious that David believes God knows everything about him, right? And what we were reading at the beginning of Psalm 139, it's pretty obvious David knows that God knows everything about him. God, David is talking here. David says, God, you know my thoughts, Before I even, you know the words I'm going to speak before I even speak a word. David says, you know where I've been. You know where I'm going. You knew me before my, before I was even born. In fact, God, you know my number of days before I even lived one. So it's pretty obvious that David is saying, God, you know me. You know my heart. You know my words. You know my thoughts. So, so here's what I want you to see in this. When David prays, search me, God, and know my heart. Here's what I believe this morning. He's not asking God to search his heart so that God would know his heart. You following me? He's not praying, God, search my heart, God, so that you'll know my heart. Obviously, obviously David already knows that God knows everything about him. God already knows his heart, and David already knows this according to the beginning of Psalm 139. So I need you to get this. He is not saying, God, search my heart so that you'll know what's in my heart. David already knows, God, you know everything about me. You already know what's in my heart. So so I want to ask you this question. You don't have to answer it out loud. You don't have to raise your hand or anything because I think all of us will fall in this category. How many of you have ever said, God knows my heart? God knows my heart. God knows my heart. Listen, you usually, we, we, not you, we usually say, God knows my heart when we're trying to defend ourselves, Right? When we're trying to defend ourselves, that's usually one of our responses. Well, God knows my heart. Or, or we use that a lot when we've actually done something wrong, right? Well, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. And listen to me for a moment. God knows your heart better than you do, okay? God knows your heart better than you do. And I think sometimes we, we foolishly say that. Well, God knows my heart. And I, I want to tell some people sometimes when they say that. Yes, he does. <laughs> Yes, he does. Do you? Do you know your heart? Do you know your heart? And this is, what, this is exactly what David is praying. He is not praying, search my heart, oh God, so that you know what's in it. He's telling him, God, search my heart and show me what's in it. And let me give you, let me give you a scripture that kind of supports this. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. And you may not like the scripture, but this is the truth of the matter. Jeremiah 17, verse 9, it says this. The heart is what? The heart is deceitful. Oh, no, they have such a good heart. They have such a good heart. No, no, no. What's the Bible say? The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Who can understand it? Uh, Another translation says it this way, which might be more popular. You, You recognize it. The heart is deceitfully what? Wicked. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Now, we, we, we tend to focus on, and I know I've taught and lots of people t- teach on this. We tend to focus on the word wicked. This morning, I want to focus on the word deceitful. 
Bible says that the heart is deceitful. Let me give you a definition real quick of deceitful. This isn't mine. This is actually Webster's or I Googled it, okay? Deceitful means to, to be misleading. Your heart is what? Misleading. Your heart will, def definition, give false impressions. Now here's the next two that I actually like because they're nice and simple. The heart is sneaky. Your heart is tricky. Your heart, so, so watch the translation of this verse. Your heart is sneaky. It will trick you. It will mislead you. It will deceive you. That's what David is talking about. That's what David is talking about. David is saying, search my heart, Lord, because I know it'll trick me. I know it'll fool me. I know it'll deceive me. Now, and I want to talk about something just for a moment. And I, and I know this is a touchy subject. Uh, please cut me some slack, at least until I'm all done with it, okay? And I know it's probably controversial and, and everything else, but, but I really believe this needs to be addressed. Um, it's been all over Facebook, all over the news, and I know I think Pastor Lori talked about it in prayer this morning. Um, how many of you know that a, a pastor committed suicide? Um, I guess he's kind of a popular, I never heard of him, but it's a big church, thousands of members. But he actually committed suicide this week. And some things have been being put out on Facebook and everything else. And I, now listen, I want you to understand before I, I say what I'm going to say, I'm not making a judgment on his salvation this morning, okay? I am not making a judgment on his salvation or his, his, his spiritual, uh, what did I write, or his eternal destiny, okay? I'm not making, listen, God has not to this day ever called me up and said, hey, Troy, you think I should let this guy in or not? <laughs> He's never called me. So it's not, it's not, listen, I work for God, but I'm in sales. I'm not in admissions, okay? <laughs> All right. He doesn't, th th that's not my job. That's not my job. So I'm not making that statement. I'm not making that call this, this morning, okay? I want you to understand that before I jump into this. But a lot of the Facebook, a lot of the stuff that are being posted is, is stuff like this. Oh, he's in a better place. Oh, he's dancing with Jesus on streets of gold. Oh, this or that. And listen, he may well be. He may well be. I don't know. He, he might be, okay? But listen, I also think, because when I start to, to dig in and start to think about what, what, what the Bible, what God says about suicide, I, I also thought this, you know, oh, he's in a better place. He's dancing with Jesus and all of those. But here's what I was also thinking, because I was thinking, okay, what is Jesus thinking? What is Jesus thinking? And, and I, I, I don't think, this is what I, I don't think Jesus is thinking this. Well, hey, thank you, how did I write it? I want to make sure I don't get in trouble here. Thank you for getting here earlier than you were supposed to. I don't think Jesus was like, hey, thank you for getting here earlier for, than you were supposed to. Thank you for leaving all the work that I had called for you to do to somebody else. I don't think that was Jesus's heart. I don't think that's what he's telling him. Oh, I'm so glad you got here early. <laughs> I'm so glad you got here early. See, listen, I know our days are numbered and I know God has a plan, but I believe we can cut them short. You can cut him short. We're like, oh, well, God is in control. No, you can take that out of his hand at times. And I believe that guy got there early. I believe he got there early. And I don't think Jesus was like, I'm so glad you came early. I'm so glad. That, that's not the case. But I think we got to be careful. We got to be careful as a church because we're starting to teach that to people. Listen, believers. Believers, I need believers to understand this morning. When you, you gave your life to Jesus, you no longer have the right to take it yourself. Amen. If you've given your life to Jesus, you have no right to take it. When the, when the church starts teaching and preaching, well, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're treading on dangerous ground. And we've got to be, we've got to be very, 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 very careful. The devil, if, if you, know the, you know the Bible, the devil tried to get Jesus to commit suicide, didn't he? Hey, just, just leap from here. Just jump from here. The devil tried to get Jesus to commit suicide, and Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's written. Jesus knew the word of God, and he'd had no part of it. Jesus is like, no, 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 no. Listen, suicide, and here's, here's my problem with it. Suicide for a believer is actually a believer saying, well, you know what? My problem is bigger than my God. Listen. And I know people are going through some incredibly difficult times and things. But your problem is never, never, never bigger than your God. Never, never. And I don't care what you're going through. And I know you're going through some incredibly hard things. You've been through some incredibly hard th things. Suicide is not the answer. 
Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And he's the only answer. He's the only answer. Now, now I know Lori touched on this a little bit, but, but there's a whole thing going on out there about, well, well, there's this whole mental health issue, this whole mental health issue. See, my fear, and when I'm reading some of the Facebook stuff, and my fear is we're starting to label everything mental health. And, and we're starting to label it that way and saying, it was a mental health issue, so it's okay. It was a mental health issue, so it's okay. Now listen, I understand it, and again, I'm not making a judgment. And I think some of these are case-by-case, case, individual basis. I get all of that. But, but, but I want you to think of it this way, and some might get mad, but, but I want you to think of it this way. A man with mental health issues went up into a hotel building in Las Vegas and shot hundreds of concert goers down below. We didn't once say of that man, well, he's in a better place, did we? People go into schools and shoot young kids. That's a mental health issue. But we don't say of those people, oh, he's in a better place. He had mental health issues. He's in a better place. Listen, church, I want to challenge you, and I know that all sounds mean, and I hope people don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but we can't start preaching. It's okay. It's okay. I know you're going through some tough, difficult times. Just go be with Jesus. That's the answer. Just go be with Jesus. That is not the answer. Cling to Jesus. Call out to Jesus here and now. Amen? That, that, that has to be the answer. That has to be the message that the church is teaching today. Not, well, just go to heaven. If that's the case, listen, if that's the case, why don't we just have altar calls and when people accept Jesus, we'll take them in the back and shoot them. Right? So they can go to heaven and they'll never have a chance to backslide. Right? I'll go to hell, okay? But, but they won't right? Listen, it's not an option. One more scripture and then we'll move on. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose what? Choose life. Man, if the church should be pre preaching any message, that's the message right there. Choose life. No matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult the, the, the problem, no matter if, if it's finances, marriage, health issues, depression, whatever it is, choose life. Choose life. And listen, believers this morning, if you ever get hit with the questions and everything else, that should be the message you teach and preach. Choose life. Choose life. Amen. Now, now you say, why, why did you go off on all of that? Because here's why I went off on all of that, okay? This is what David is talking about. This is exactly what David is talking about. David is literally saying, Lord, show me what's in my heart that's not correct because I know my heart will deceive me. My heart will trick me. My heart will deceive me. And literally, that's what's going on out there. People's hearts are deceiving them. Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. You should just go to be with Jesus. You should, listen, it's, oh, oh, listen, listen, it's okay, it's okay. They did it first. Come on, your heart will tell you that, huh? Oh, it's okay, you're all right. They did it first. It's okay, everyone else is doing it. It's okay, God knows your heart. It's okay, it's okay, they should forgive you first, right? Come on. It's okay, your heart's going to tell you, oh, no, 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 you got a right. You have a right. They should forgive you first. Listen, our hearts will deceive us. That's why it's so important to pray this prayer. That's why David, that's what David is saying. Lord, show me what's really in my heart so that I can deal with it. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? David did not pray, Lord, search my heart so you know what's in it. David is literally praying, Lord, search my heart, reveal to me what's in it so that I can deal with it. And listen, I want to challenge you this morning. Pray that. Pray that prayer. And you're like, I don't want to pray that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do, okay? Pray that prayer. Ask God, God, show me what's in my heart because I know my heart will lie to me, it'll deceive me, it'll trick me, and it'll fool me. So God, I want you to show me what's in there so that I can deal with it. So that I can deal with it, amen? That's what David is talking about. So search my heart. Here's the second part we're dividing into. Verse 23. Search my heart. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. My anxious thoughts. Different translations so I can give you an understanding of anxious thoughts. Know my anxieties. One said, know my worries. And the other one said, know my fears. 
So here's the second point of that prayer. Reveal my fears. Reveal my fears. What is it, listen to me, what is it that makes you afraid personally? You. What is it that makes you afraid? It's not, not, not snakes, not spiders, not elevators, okay? Not uh, clowns. I hate clowns. <laughs> clowns freak me out. Sorry, they just freak me out, okay? Not, not, that, not, kind of, not that kind of fear, okay? Not, not what scares you, not what, not what makes you afraid in, in, in that way, okay? Listen, what, what, is it, what is it that makes you afraid? What are you, what are you worried about? What are you afraid of? Let me give you some examples so I kind of clear it up. Are you afraid of losing your job? Are you afraid of not getting a job? Are you afraid of not getting married by a certain age? Are you afraid of getting divorced or, or, or being stuck in a bad marriage? Are you, listen to me because I'm going to talk about this one later. This was one of mine. Are you afraid of failing? I think a lot of people have that one. Are you afraid of failing? Are you afraid of losing someone or something? How many of you are you afraid of dying? Afraid of dying? Are you afraid of not having enough money? Come on, that's a lot of you. Are you afraid of not having enough money? Why pray this? Why pray, God, show me my anxious thought? Why pray, God, show me what worries me? Why pray, God, show me what I'm afraid of? Because let me, let me tell you this, and you should write this one down. Because I believe, write this down, what we fear the most reveals where we trust God the least. Let me say that again. What we fear the most reveals where we trust God the least. Oh, I'm scared. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid my marriage, my marriage isn't going to make it. I'm afraid my marriage isn't going to make it. Listen, I'm not trusting God with my marriage. I'm afraid I, I, I won't have enough to pay the bills. I won't be able to make it. I don't have enough to pay the bills. Listen, I'm not trusting God to be my provider. I, I, I'm, man, I'm afraid about my, I'm, I'm, I, I'm in fear for my kids. Don't go here. Don't go there. Put on that bicycle helmet before you even walk downstairs. I'm afraid for my kids. Listen, I'm, if you're there, you're not trusting your kids to God. You're not trusting your, man, I have, I, sorry about this one, but man, I got to eat nuts and berries just to be, be healthy the rest of my life. Listen, listen, you're not trusting God to be your healer. You're not trusting God for your health. What you fear the most reveals where you're trusting God the least. Now, now let me give you an example. And this one, it just really hits home. Um, it was about, I, 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 it was about two months ago. And I got, and, and, and I'll, I'll explain to you why I believe fear is a spirit. But I got this spirit of fear all over me about two months ago. And man, it stuck around for two weeks. Okay, it stuck around for two weeks, but I got this spirit of fear, and 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 I'll just be honest with you. Here's what what it was like two months ago. I had this fear to just creep on me that oh this church this church night church this church isn't going to make it. It's not going to make it. It's going to fail. Now that's not true. Okay, that's not true. But man, I don't know. I just out of the blue, I got this fear and I couldn't shake it for a couple of weeks. Like, man, this church isn't going to make it. It's going to fail. You know, people, people have left. People, I got this thought, people won't come to a church in a school. Not in Irvine, at least, right? Maybe Riverside, but not in Irvine, right? People don't like small churches. And I, and I kept hearing that, and it was just getting, it, it just latched onto me. How many of you know that people leave every single church? Yeah. People leave every single church. I hear pastors, and it kind of it kind of did make me laugh and give me a wake-up call. I hear pastors with hundreds and hundreds of people at their church talking about the couple of people that left. And I'm like, Lord, let me never do that. It's a three-day weekend. We're missing a lot of people. And, and I, got, I got one, two, three, maybe four. I got three texts this weekend. Hey, I'm not going to make it this weekend. I'm not going to wake it this weekend. I'm not going to make If I would have got those three months ago or way back when, I'd be like, oh, man, who's going to be in church this morning? Now I have a different mindset, and my mindset is the same words. Oh, man, who's going to be in church this morning? See, my focus isn't on who's not here. You can't have your focus on who's not here, but who is here? You're going to spend all your time worrying about who's leaving, who's not here, who's, who's gone away for the week. Listen, my focus is on who's here. And yeah, I pray for those that aren't here. But listen, my focus is on those that show up. And, and, and the fact that people won't come to church at a school, 
this is the house of God wherever we are. That doesn't even matter. They won't come to church because it's a small church. Gosh, we run into people now, and I'll just say the name. Uh, no, I won't say the name. They go to a big, huge church over by us, a really big, big church. And you know what they're telling me? I hate big church. I want to find a small church. And we're like, hey, you ought to come to ours. They never do. But, but it's like, so, so none of those things were even true. None of those things were even true, but man, that spirit got on me, and I heard a pastor, I heard somebody say this, and it just, and, and boom, it was gone. It was gone that fast. He said this, you cannot be driven by fear, you must be led by faith. You see, I was being driven by fear. I got to do something. I got to do something. Oh, what if it fails? What if this happens? What if that happens? You cannot be driven, and I don't mean just church, in your life. You cannot be driven by fear. You've got to be led by faith. We've, all of us, we have to be led by faith. Listen, I have to love pleasing God more than I'm afraid of failing. And that's hard. That's so easy to say as I'm standing up here, but that is hard. I don't know about you, but for me, that's a big one for me, the fear of failing. Man, that's, that's huge. But I've got to be more interested in pleasing God than, than, than the, that fear of failing. Now, let me add this. Let me add this to this, all of this, okay? We didn't come here this morning. I got here a little late, and these guys were already had a lot of this up. But listen, we didn't come here this morning, you know, and, and, and grab a seat and just say, okay, God, we're here. If you want the curtains up, God, put them up. If you want the signs up, if you want all this equipment, curtains, arise in Jesus' name, right? We didn't do that, okay? There was, there was still work to be done. There was, still, there was work to do, but we still trust God for the rest. We still, and, and, and it was funny. I, I wrote those notes. I wrote this note Thursday or Friday, and I'm reading my notes last night, and I read this. We do what we can, we do what we can do and trust God for the rest, but you know what word jumped out at me? Rest. But not the way I wrote it. And this is just all a side note, okay? We do what we can do, and we trust God for the rest. Two points. Trust God to do the rest. Trust God to do what we can't do anyway. But even bigger than that, when I read it last night, God just kind of spoke to me. Trust me for the rest. Rest. For the rest, I don't have to work. I don't have to be so busy doing, trying to get everything done, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to get my faith. Trust God for the rest. Rest in the fact that you're trusting God. Rest in the fact that, man, I'm prayed about this, I'm praying about this, and I'm going to trust God in all of that. So, so I, I say all that to say this. Listen, get a job, okay? I don't want to get mislead anybody. Listen, get a job, but trust God to provide. Listen to me, married couples. Be nice to your spouse, okay? Be nice to your spouse, but trust God for your marriage, okay? Trust God for your marriage. Quit eating Big Macs every day, okay? But trust God for your health. Trust, train up your child in the way they should go, but trust God to take care of your kids. What we fear the most reveals where we're trusting God the least. David prayed, God, show me my anxious thoughts, show me my fears so I'll know what area of my life to trust you even more in, God. Help me to trust you and to fear less. That was the second one. Here's the third one. Well, let me give you some scriptures for that one real quick. First John 4, 18, because I always want to back it up with scripture. Perfect love casts out what? Fear, all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this. For God has not given us a spirit. A spirit of what? A fear. So, so fear could be a spirit that can get on you, but you have the power to get it off of you also, amen? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You have the spirit of, a, of power, love, and a sound mind that removes the spirit of fear whenever it gets on you. And listen, it will try. It will try. I'm just kind of ticked off that it's stuck around for two weeks, okay? But I'm not surprised that it tried to get on me, but I'm just mad that I let it stick around for two weeks. It will try, but God has not given us that spirit, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So, so hang on to those. God, and pray that prayer. Show me my fears so I can trust God in those areas of my life. Pray that. God, show me my fears so that I can trust you in those areas of my life. Here's the third one. Now, you're not going to like this one. 
Here's the third one, and, and, and I want you to understand. I'm gonna, I, 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 want, I want you to pray this, okay? But you're not going to want to pray this third one. You're not going to want to pray this third one. And, and don't just shut me down when it shows up on the board back there, okay? Don't shut me down. Just let me explain it to you, and you got to hear this one out, okay? So here's number three. You ready? Uncover my sins. Uncover my sin. I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing. You're thinking, I'm not going to pray that. I'm not going to pray that. I'm not praying uncover my sins. Yes, Lord, uncover my sins. No way, I'm not praying that. I'm not praying that. You need to have an understanding of what David is talking about here. He's already saying, God, you know me. He, here's what David is saying. He is not saying, God, I want you to uncover my sin in front of everybody. That's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. He's not asking him. He's not asking God to do that. He is not asking God. God, uncover. Listen, if you want your sins uncovered in front of everybody, run for president, okay? Just run for president. All your sins will be out there, all right? Listen, that is not what David is asking. He is not saying, God, would you just uncover my sins in front of everybody? Here's what David is saying. Lord, show me. Show me everything in my life that's unpleasing or offensive to you. Let me read you the verse 24. See if there is any offensive way in me. Show me, God, God, show me if there's sin in my life that is unpleasing to you. God, show me if there's something in my life that is offensive to you. And, and here's why I believe David is praying this. It's hard to see our own sins, amen? Come on, how many of you would agree with me? It is so much easier to see your spouse's sin than your own. It is so much easier to see your brother, your sister. It is so much easier to see somebody else's sins than our own. Now, I, I was, John and I were talking, and uh, those of you that know, we left uh, last Sunday right after church to go see my mom up in Sacramento. So we had to make that long drive up the five. All the bad drivers were out last Sunday, okay? They were all out. Now, listen to me. This is, not a, this, is re, this is not really a sin. If it is, uh, God will convict me and I'll have to work on it, okay? This is not really a sin, but this really is a great example. How many of you, how many of you have ever been in your car and you're, you're driving? I do this all the time. I'm driving and, and, and you watch people. And, and, and you watch people. You watch people. Have you ever watched somebody throwing a fit in their car? You know, how many of you know what I'm talking about? You ever watch somebody throwing a fit in your car? And what are you thinking? You can be honest. I know what you're thinking. What an idiot, right? You're thinking, you can't say idiot in church. Yeah, you can in this example, okay? I, I, I literally watch people, and they're going like this. They're going like, mm, 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 or they're going, mm. how many of you know what I'm talking about, right? And what are you thinking when you see that person? What are you thinking? You're thinking, chill out. You, I know what you're thinking. Hold that thought, Lori, okay? You're thinking, chill out, relax relax knock it off I think that I see people doing that and I'm like I'm like seriously relax dude chill out I do I, I think that when I see people do that and I never do that <laughs> it's easier to see somebody else's sins than our own isn't it man we're driving I'm like I'm not getting mad but but man I I'm not a very, I'm an excellent driver, okay? I'm just not a patient driver, okay? I'm, I'm at a light sometimes, and I'm thinking, all right, it's not going to get any greener, guy. You might, you might as well go, go, you know, or I'll be like, pick a lane, pick a lane, either lane. I don't care which one you pick. Just pick a lane, okay? Or driving down the five, it's only two lanes, and God forbid, I have no idea why they only made that thing two lanes. It should at least be three at some points, and you get a car in the left lane, and I'm like, dude, slower traffic, go to the right. And Lori's usually like, you can't push him <laughs> over to the right. And I'm like, I know, but I figure if I get that much closer, he'll realize he needs to scoot over. He never realizes that, okay? Here's my point. Here's my point in sharing that. Now you're thinking, man, my pastor is a sinner. No, I'm not, okay? The same thing I'm thinking when I'm looking at people. What an idiot. There's my... I don't, there's probably a hundred, if not a thousand people out there that have been thinking that very same thing about me. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. Look at that guy getting all worked up. Getting all worked up. He's got all day to get to Sacramento. No, I don't. He's got, listen, but, but here's, here's my point, and I said that's not a sin. That's the way we are, though. Man, we can spot sin in someone else's life in a heartbeat. In our own lives, oh, we just never even see it. 
And we could be doing the very same thing. And I, and I think I said it this way before. Somebody else said this, but I stole it. I, we, we accuse others and excuse ourselves. We accuse others and excuse ourselves. It's not, it, it's easy to see somebody else's sin and not our own. And that's what David is talking about. God. He's like, God, show me the sin in my life. Show me the sin in my life. And, and we do it all the time. We do it all the time. We, we do it. I'm not a gossip. I'm not a gossip. I'm just telling them so they can pray. I'm just telling them so they can pray about it, right? I'm not a gossip. I, I'm not prideful. I'm not pride. I can't help it if I'm just better than everybody else, right? But I'm not prideful, right? I don't get angry. I don't get angry. Well, not like that. I'm not like that. It's so easy to see somebody else's sin rather than our own. God's not, listen, here, here's the point of what David is praying. God's not interested in telling everyone else your sins. He's really not. God's not interested in telling everyone else your sin. But if you will give God how can I word this? If you'll give God permission to point out your sins in your life to you so that you can deal with them, so that you can deal with them, not so that he could tell everybody else about them, so that you can deal with them. If you'll allow God to point out your sins in your own life, listen, you will avoid your sins being shattered from rooftops. Okay, that's scriptural if you know what I'm talking about. You'll avoid your sins going public. If you'll just say, God, show me any offensive way in me. Show me my sins so that I can deal with it. And you deal with it, then, then, then it'll be taken care of. Listen, if you want to ignore those, your sin will be shouted from the rooftop eventually. That's what the Bible says. So listen, that, that, that's what David, David is talking about. Let me help you. I wrote a couple quick notes on this. How to, how to know when you're falling into those categories. Listen to what others are saying to you. Okay, listen to what other people, listen, not necessarily one person, but listen, when more than one person is coming up to you and saying, you know, you seem to be very angry lately. You seem to be raising your voice a lot. When more than one person comes, starts coming to you saying that, guess what? You're probably having some anger issues. And you probably, you know, with one person, you could say, well, that's just them. When several people start coming up to you saying, you know, I think you're drinking just a little bit too much. Just, I think you drink just a little too much. I think you need to cut back. Listen, when several people start coming to you saying that, you need to examine that area of your life. You know, I, I, I think what I, I wrote down some other ones, but listen, uh, this one, I've never heard this one. Seriously, I haven't. Not, that's not a pun. But I've said this to people, you know. You seem to be using a lot of foul words lately. You need to watch your language. When several people start telling you that, guess what you need to start doing? You need to start watching your words. You need to be listening to what people are telling you. You need to be listening. When more than one person starts coming and telling you something, guess who probably has the problem? You, not them, okay? You, not them. Here's the second one. What do I okay or what do I, what do I rationalize? When somebody's talking, oh, come on, it's not that big a deal. Come on, have you ever done that? Come on, man. It's not that big a deal. Everyone else does it. What are you beginning to rationalize in your life? It could very well be a sin that is catching up to you. Amen? Here's the third one. What am I most defensive about? Okay, my driving. Okay, what am I most defensive about? I don't have a problem there. Mind your own business. When you start hearing yourself saying those, it's time to take a look inside. It's time to take a look inside. That is what David is talking about. That is what David is praying. God, search me, God. Reveal any, any offensive way, unpleasing way in me. Reveal any sin in me so that I can deal with it. Listen, if you continue to ignore it, if you continue to dismiss it, you will never deal with it and you'll never have victory in that area of your life. It takes courage to pray that, okay? I know that. It takes courage to pray it. But God will point something out in your life that you've probably, that you've been ignoring. Or maybe you just haven't even recognized it. Maybe you just haven't even recognized it. You're not even aware of it. If you begin to pray that prayer, God will begin to point those areas out in your life. And listen to me. You want that to happen. You really do. I know it doesn't sound like a fun thing, but you want that to happen. And let me just add this. Confess to God for forgiveness. Confess to people for healing. You're like, huh? Let me give you a couple of scriptures real quick. First John 1 John 1.9 says this. If we confess our sins, he, God, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive 
all our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Man, when we begin to confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive them. But now watch this, James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other, to other people, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It's important to have believers in your life. It's important to have believers around you that you can confess your sins to that you know will pray for you. That scripture says it's powerful and effective. It's powerful and effective, and it brings healing. It brings healing. So I want to encourage you in that. Man, begin to pray that. Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. Reveal, reveal my fears. God, uncover my sins. And here's the last one. Here's the last one. Lead me. Let me read you the verse. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. Message Bible. Guide me on the road to eternal life. ERV, lead me on, on the path that has always been right. Now follow me on this train of thought. Lord, my heart can deceive me. Search my heart and show me the things in my life that are not right or not pure. Lord, show me the areas of my life which, which that, that I'm fearing, the areas of my life that I'm fearing that I need to trust you in. Lord, show me my sin. And then, and then watch this. Now, Lord, Lead me. Lead me. I have, and I'm going to give them to you all in like 30 seconds. I have this many verses for lead me, okay? David, and this is, this is the Psalms. David, if you look at David's life, you read the Psalms, David is constantly, not just once, not just twice. David is constantly saying, and David is constantly praying, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. I can't do this on my own. I don't know the way to go. David is constantly, constantly, constantly praying, Lord, lead me, lead me. Let me give you a few examples. Psalm, 20, Psalm 23, you know this one, 23, 2 and 3. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness. Psalm 27, 11. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path. Psalm 31, 3, for, your, for you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Psalm 5, 8, lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. Psalm 25, 5, lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. Last one, Psalm 143, 10, teach me to do your will for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. David constantly said, David constantly prayed, God, lead me, Lord. Lead me. I need you, Lord, to lead me daily, daily. And here's what I want to, want, want to give you, and, I, and, I, and I'm closing right now. I'm going to finish early this morning. We should be praying that every single day. God, lead me. God, lead me. Lead me, Lord. Pray it every single day, the moment you get up. God, I give you this day, my day. Lead me this day. Lead me where to go. Lead me what to say. Lead me what to do. Lead me. Listen, if David needed to pray that every day, so do you. And so do I. Lead me. I want to dare you. And, and I hope you were taking notes this morning because I want to dare you to pray this prayer because I believe it could be a life-changing prayer for each and every one of us in here this morning. I want to dare you to pray this prayer. Search my heart, God. God, search my heart. Search my heart. Reveal anything in it. Reveal, Lord, search my heart so that it can no longer trick me and deceive me. Search my heart. Lord, reveal my fears, Lord. Show me the things that I fear where I should be trusting you. Lord, uncover my sin. God, reveal to me that sin that I'm not even aware of, that sin that I'm overlooking, that sin that I'm rationalizing, that sin that I'm taking for granted. God, reveal that to me so that I can deal with it. And then finally, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. Um, guys, could you just like one more time put Psalm, the, the, that, that prayer up there? And I want to pray it, and then we'll close in prayer. Psalm 139, 23, and 24. The very first one I gave you guys. Throwing you guys a curveball. There you go. Hey, would you all pray this with me, and then I'm going to close in prayer. Ready? Go. Search me, God, and know my heart. 
Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Father, I pray this morning, God, I pray that each and every... Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the message. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or online at ignitechurchoc.com.